So let's go to the state of California where we get more shenanigans from the federal court, which is why we might see that as a theme in the first two stories of the day that we we really got to stop worrying about what courts think, right? We got to stop worrying about what the courts think of us. We got to stop worrying about um, running to the courts or let's not say worry, relying on the courts to bail us out because our states are overrun by liberal morons. And we see this in California, despite the fact that California does not have a provision in its constitution granting you the right to keep and bear arms. Some will say that allows the state to, t- to weigh in on it. My good friend and uh, very intelligent on legal matters and many other things, Ms. Suzanne Sherman, author, author of the book Federalism, which you guys should check out. It's a great book. Uh, says that because it's not in the state constitution, California has no right to to regulate your uh, ability to keep and bear arms. Either way, now you're at the federal level, and that's where you get these shenanigans. And we'll talk about this. Dan Zimmer of truthaboutguns.com. Once again, links to all three stories in the description box down below. Last month, District Court Judge Roger Benitez once again ruled in Duncan v. Bonta that California's high-capacity magazine ban is unconstitutional. The first time, he made it clear, uh, and he also took into judgment under Heller. This time, the ruling also took into account Bruin, the two most major consequential decisions when it comes to the right to keep and bear arms. He issued an injunction blocking enforcement of the laws, but stayed it, giving the state time to appeal the ruling to the Ninth Circuit. And so, of course, because that happened, the Ninth Circuit was more than happy to take the case and violated its own rules to have it heard by the exact same in-block judges who overturned Benitez's ruling the first time the case reached them. So yesterday, the Ninth stayed Benitez's injunction to keep Californians from exercising any inconvenient Second Amendment rights while they take their sweet time in hearing the case once again and then issuing another ruling. This is another problem with courts. Courts do not go quickly. Government does not move at the speed of reality. So the idea that we'll just appeal it to the court. Great. Well, the court's going to take its sweet time. We're going to see this in the second story of the day as well, which is why the only solution, the true solution for freedom when it comes to your God-given right to keep and bear arms is the local level. And I know people will say, well, California, New Mexico, they're all lost. You got to if you're going to stay there, then you're going to have to fight tooth and nail when and start that dog catcher and move your way up, because the only way you're going to get those rights back is not by the courts, because the courts can issue something. But you've seen in the year after Bruin, it's not easier to get a gun in New York or in California or in uh, New Jersey or Illinois. They're still making it difficult for you. The only places that have expanded your God-given right to keep and bear arms are red states. And that's and there's there's fighting tooth and nail there too. So as you can imagine, there was some pointed criticism of the Ninth Circuit's clear double standard where Second Amendment rights are concerned. None of it is none of it more direct than Pat, Judge Patrick Butamont Butamaze. You can read Judge Patrick Butamaze's uh whole thing if you go uh to the description box down below, click on the link. Go to truthaboutguns.com and you can read all of it. It's a very, it's a very uh, pointed smackdown of the entire process. And it's it's something that needs to be called out because Californians or the, the way the California law looks, does it go against this? And how does the court react to that? So the idea here is that great. So you had a judge say, that the magazine ban, which is actually happening in multiple states as well, that uh, magazine capacity is in keeping with your God-given right to keep and bear arms, which is obvious. Uh, Some judges, as we've seen in previous stories, have tried to come up with all kinds of wacky ways to, um, to, to reinforce their magazine bans, but they never come down and they never really pass the test because that's in keeping The idea of magazine capacity, whether it's a single shot or it's a 30 round mag, is in keeping with the historical text and the God given right to keep and bear arms. So there's really no way of getting around it. Um, And so as this judge talks about 
Bruin is there. They're not looking at Bruin. They're violating their own rules. This is the issue with federal courts. This is the issue with relying on judges and fancy robes to decide your fate because they're not using law. Now, some like the Fifth Circuit and some other justices, like we've even seen Democrat uh, appointed judges grind their teeth and say, yes, this is not keeping with Bruin. However, I don't support it, but this is as of right now, the text of the law that we need to interpret. The Ninth Circuit just doesn't give a rip because they are operating on the on the left coast. And so they're just going, whatever, it's fine. We don't want it. It's, we're going to put a stay on the injunction because whatever the case may be. And then they'll use precedent and feelings and a uh, the living, breathing idea of the U.S. Constitution, right? It's a living, breathing document, which is ridiculous. I've never, my contract is not a living, breathing contract with T-Mobile or, you know, my house or whatever the case may be. But the fact that they try to do it here is, is a little bit ridiculous. So Californians will just have to wait until the Ninth Circuit is dragged, kicking and screaming into the post-Bruin world and is forced to allow them to fully exercise their right to keep and bear arms. And this is the crux of the argument here. Like I said, you can go read the entire um, uh, summation here by this judge. It is a very good summation, and it, it you know it, it does help to to show really the the battle between the strict constitutional uh, originalist interpretation, if you want to use that that framework, versus the more progressive. Um, feelings-based, precedent-driven, not originalist interpretation that a lot of people, especially on people like the Ninth Circuit, are using. And so this is the, the problem when you rely on courts. We have to right now in certain places, I get that, but we should also be moving in a direction where we take back local offices, sheriff's departments, um, because in a lot of places you can elect sheriffs, sheriff's departments, school boards, town boards. So that way in places like Massachusetts, when they try to zone you out of existence, right? They try to zone gun shops or gun ranges out of existence. You have people on there who stand for your values. You have to step up. You have to get involved. The only way forward is local, 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 because relying on judges, while they may give you the ruling you want, it's going to take time and it's going to constantly be, argued. Now you can make the case that a law could be argued as well, but the fact of the matter is if the law is on the books in your favor, it's going to be that way while it's being fought as we see in California right now, the magazine ban is back in effect. So even if the law is bad, it's still bad. Even if SCOTUS comes down and says, Hey, you can't do that. They'll just reword it and reapply it. We've seen it time and time again. So nothing against the courts, right? Nothing against the courts at all, but they are going to continue to push as far as they can outside of your Thomases, your Alitos, uh, you know, this judge out here, um, Judge Benitez, uh, and a couple others that are really for the original interpretation and what the SCOTUS is laying out as far as things like Bruin. Outside of that, folks, you're going to be getting people like um, whatever the lady is on SCOTUS that doesn't know what a woman is, and she has her progressive ideology, and she's going to enforce it. And that's the way it's going, right? That is the way we are headed. 10 years down the line, 15 years down the line, if the union is still together, we're going to have an activist Supreme Court. There's no way of getting around it. And so you can't, We we are so in this rut of relying on them that it's going to be to our detriment unless we get back to local, local, local.